fitting for this time of year, uh, today's Q&A questions all focus on just how much you need to save for retirement, uh, including how whether you don't want to outlive your nest egg uh, in, if you live too long. Sam Safe is president and CEO of Purpose Investments, and he's here for Q&A. Thanks, Sam. Great to be here. Uh, so the first question is, when is saving 10% of my net income not enough for retirement? Uh, <laughs> which is interesting, right? People think about how to save, uh, and it feels like a lot. It feels like too much, really. Even 10% is a lot of your income to put away. Yeah. And yet, when we think about it over the course of kind of a lifetime of earning and a lifetime of spending, is 10% too much? Mm, uh, look, 10% is the bare minimum if you start at the age of 20. Right. And that's the simple. I mean, it was designed as a way to think about things. If you start, you, the day you get your first paycheck in the 20, early 20s, and through your entire career put away 10% of your income. It's a good way to think about it and you'll end up with pretty much the amount of money you made every single year. But for most people they don't start right away, which is a bad thing by the way. I'm a big believer of starting right away yeah. and that's a good thing. But but also you also want flexibility. So you want to put in and get into the habit of doing as much as you can and I'm a big believer that 10 is just not enough. So one school of thought and I've increasingly come to the, to the view that we need to think of our earnings as uh, we earn, we only earn for let's say 40 years, mm -hmm. but we we're going to spend it for 70 or yeah. whatever it is. So you need to think of today's earnings as lasting extra years. It's kind of like fact, an athlete in many respects. That's I always right. Say, yeah, you got to bank about, it. That's right. Uh, and if you do the math that way, there is a case to be made that you should save half. Yeah. We should be able to live There's on no half question. of what we earn. There's no question. And look, the, the more disciplined you are, the more frugal you are early on the more it, it really compounds over time. We know the power of compounding. And so the yeah. earlier you start, the more you put away in your earlier. So if you can live at home, you know, when you're 20, in 23, 24, 25, or if you can live a little bit cheaper, eat, eat more craft dinner as opposed to, you know, uh, going out and buying many Starbucks lattes, yeah. I think it works really well for you. But the reality is, is many people aren't doing that. But, but here's the thing, you're making $50,000, 10% is only $5,000. We have an RSP structure that allows you to potentially give up to eighteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year. You should be maximizing your RSP. That's what my view. And is. we just would we'll just put a thing up that said single people should be earning sixty to se should be saving sixty to seventy percent of their income. That's that's impossible for that's most big, people. That's too right. much. I mean, d two income families might be able to do that, and oftentimes they will do that. But single people, it's a little more difficult to do that. Okay, there's one argument against this thinking, including against my own thinking, and that is you save all of this money, uh, assuming you're going to live to 90 and you keel over at 61. <laughs> uh, there is a bit of a kind of a front loading our life experience uh, that we all do, right? We do it now because do buy, we don't know if we Do you buy life insurance? Do you buy health insurance? Do you buy, I mean, all these right. things. It's an insurance policy. The reality is, uh, like, look, when we sit in our situations, we don't know when we're going to get hit by a car or when right. we're going to croak. There's no, it's all optionality. This is a very important thing because what happens if you do live to 90 or 95 or 100 and you don't want to be sitting there and not being able to fund your lifestyle. Which gets us to a question that we did receive. Uh, question two today is how do I adjust my savings rate if I expect to live to 100? Uh, and I'm going to start this question by asking what is the expectation of a savings rate? Because you we used yeah. to say we can make over the over the long term 8% in stocks, you know, a yeah. GIC. I, I bought a GIC in my lifetime that made me 5%. Yeah. Not anymore. No. So what is the savings w rate? Well, well, look, I mean, the reality is um, if you're living, I mean, people are living longer. We know that. This is the whole dilemma that every nation's facing, that your retirement age has stayed flat. Right. In, uh, you know, uh, uh, people are living, you know, 10, 15 years longer than they were when that retirement age, I mean, the original retirement age was set at 65, so you've lived 10 years after retirement. Right. Now it's 20 years, and it's going to be probably more like 30 or 35 years. So the reality is what that means is two things. One, you got to save more or you got to work longer. It's one of the two. Right. And, and I actually believe the retirement age will go up and should be going up. But on top of that, I also think that people have to take into account the, the, the savings, uh, the greater savings, and what we were talking about. So 10% is just not enough. You've got to be thinking about 20, 25, 30, and pushing as much as possible. And what do you do when the rates of return you're getting are not there, right? Because one of the things that's happened is are the yeah. rates we get on our investments, uh, whatever they well, are, This is the terrible. importance of you know being disciplined around the investments and not being silly. You can't squander around paying big fees and making big mistakes. So a lot of people make mistakes with their investments. They sit in cash. They don't do anything with it. This is bad because it's not helping you make money over time. You've got to be thoughtful. And, and things like GICs aren't going to get you there because that's just 2%. That's an inflation rate in many respects. Do you think that uh, levels of government have factored in the fact? Because we don't know actually how life expectancy may change. There could be some really big 
uh, big switches, right? If we right. find a cure for certain types of cancers, suddenly, <laughs> right, you're pushing it yeah, a, a decade right. all of a sudden, not a year or two. Well, look, it, it, I think it's going to be exponential, and I think we're going to see really meaningful uh, health benefits and structural kind of reforms that will ultimately mean that people do live longer than yeah. we even imagine today. It's happening every decade. It's getting longer and longer. Longevity is there. And so we need to be thinking about this. And so if you're 20, 25 years old today, you're not living till you're 80. You're likely living even beyond that. Probably 100, right? Potentially. Uh, question number three, how can I increase my after-tax investment in retirement through the purchase of an annuity? Now, not everyone will know what an annuity is, uh, so let's start with kind of how these work. Who, yeah. who are they right for? Well, look, an annuity is a, where you pay a lump sum today and you, to an insurance company, and you get a fixed distribution. So you hear about these like ads, well, guaranteed income for life, and all yep. these things like that that've been sold over the last couple of years. You know, they're they're, they're effectively a you can give us some money and we'll give you a guaranteed level of income. But here, nothing comes for free. So with an annuity, it all depends on what the IRR, the expected rate of return that the insurance company is going to generate off the money you give them. Yep. And in a low interest rate environment like we're in today. That means you're going to have to put up more money to get a higher annual guaranteed income. And so they are, it's a little bit of a trade-off and push and pull situation for someone who's looking at them. Obviously, an insurance company is helping you die before you. Yeah, they're they're doing the calculation the of like death rates and and you know averages and and they're doing this over thousands and hundreds right. of thousands of people. Is one argument in favor of an annuity? Let's say you're 55 uh, and you're selling your house, say, mm -hmm. so you have a lump sum. I think I would think one problem with it is coming up with whatever the yeah, lump sum right. you need is. But let's say you have a lump sum for some reason. Does it is it does it keep you from spending it? Is that one well, look, one mean, argument in favor of it? I think if if you're disciplined, it, whether it's an annuity or if it's in a nice retirement program and separate account, I think you have, should have that discipline. You don't spend it. But absolutely, that's really what it is. is you know f for a certainty that you're going to get that income. There's lots of problems, though. And one, it's not indexed to inflation often, so you, you, you are getting a set amount. And so if you live for 30 years, you know what inflation can yeah. do. You know, $100 a day may not be even $30 in, in 20, 30 years. So right. you have to be very thoughtful about the needs of your income levels. And then two is the level of interest rates today means you're putting a lot of capital up to get that I income need that you want. So, And are there some that are indexed to inflation? Because that sounds you, like a big risk to Oh, make. it's a huge risk. And, and you know, look, there are different types of vehicles out there, but you're just paying more for them in different uh, structures. So my, my personal view, the other part of it is that if you die at an earlier age, you don't get any lump sum. Right. Whereas if you put the money into a properly structured portfolio, invest it properly and diversify and take the right withdrawal amount, you actually, if you pass away, that amount actually can be passed along to your here, to other people behind you, and, and you know you have something to leave behind. It's an asset that you It's an asset. Own. You own something. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Great to be here. Tom Safe. Coming up, a win for workers. Canada's Supreme Court upholds the right to strike.